This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, I'm Pastor Del Scheel with Our Savior Lutheran Church. Welcome to online worship with us today. This is the 20th of September, 2020. It is also the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Please refer to the email messages from the church to keep current with announcements and prayer concerns. At this time, we will take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. At this time, we continue with the confession and forgiveness. I will say the confession, pause to give you time to repeat what I say, and then I will continue. Please repeat after me. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, I confess to you that I have sinned against you in many ways. I repent of my sins and I ask you to forgive me for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of God's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, does forgive us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
We continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord. Amen. At this time, we continue with the scripture reading with Nancy Flynn. Today's reading is recorded in the book of Philippians. Paul writes to the Philippians from prison. Though he is uncertain about the outcome of his imprisonment, he is committed to the ministry of the gospel and calls on the Philippians to live lives that reflect and enhance the gospel mission. From Philippians chapter 1. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more important for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus, whom I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I am still having. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about God's generosity challenging the common assumption that God rewards people according to what they have earned or deserve. Matthew chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a vineyard owner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. At about five o'clock he went out, and he found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last only worked about one hour, and you have made them equal with us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last 
the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the sermon. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Admittedly, most of us do not feel comfortable with the parable of the workers in the vineyard, which is in today's gospel reading. We want God to treat everyone the same. And we certainly do not feel good thinking that others might get an unfair advantage because of God's goodness and generosity. I mean, <laughs> that someone works for an hour should be paid the same as someone who works all day? Come on, what's going on here? I heard about a man named Bob. Bob owned a mid-sized trucking firm in Chicago. And one day, Bob decided to sell his company to a large national corporation while he was still ahead of the game. Every year, Bob gave his employees and drivers an annual Christmas bonus based on the company's profit and how long each employee had worked for his company. His last year, however, was for Bob an especially good year. So Bob decided to give everyone an especially generous Christmas bonus, more than any of them had ever before received. But Bob decided to deviate from the practice of taking into consideration how long a person had worked for him, and he gave everyone the same amount. To get Bob's extremely generous Christmas bonus that year, one simply had to be on the payroll on the 20th of December. As they opened their envelopes with their bonus, everyone was joyous and full of good cheer. <laughs> that is, until they began to compare checks. And guess what? It was Matthew chapter 20 all over again. I couldn't believe it, Bob said. I tried to do something good for everybody. And now, people who got larger bonus checks than they had ever gotten before are calling me to complain. Are people really that Greedy? Yes, Bob, unfortunately we are. The Bible tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice, but the truth is, it's hard to be happy for others. In Jesus' parable for today, those who worked all day long were overcome with envy toward those who worked fewer hours but were paid for a full day. There's a story uh, by Oscar Wilde about how the devil uses our feelings of envy against us. The story starts out with a hermit who was so holy that all the evil spirits sent by the devil to tempt him came away from their experience discouraged. So the devil decided to take over for himself. With scorn on his lips, he said to the evil spirits, your methods are crude. Watch and learn. And then the devil struck up a conversation with the hermit. And all the devil said was, Have you heard the good news? Your brother has been made the Bishop of Alexandria. <laughs> and it was just too much for the holy hermit. Envy and accompanying resentment swept over him like a mighty flood. Well, the same thing happened in the story Jesus told. When the laborers realized that everyone got the same paycheck, regardless of how long they worked, those who worked longer hours felt cheated. And they became envious of their co-workers and resentful toward their employer. And Jesus lets us know that they were looking at the situation all wrong. They had a bad attitude. In some translations of this story, 
the owner asks, do you be begrudge me my generosity? In our uh, transition, the translation we heard er, this morning, the owner asks, are you envious because I am generous? In a literal translation, the owner's question comes out that he accuses those who grumble as giving him the evil eye. But hey, whose money is it after all? It's the employer's. And wasn't it his right to do what he wanted with what belonged to him? And though he was particularly generous to those who worked a shorter day, was not the employer being fair to those who worked longer hours by keeping his word to them? Speaking through the prophet Isaiah, God says, My ways are not your ways, and they are not. Jesus put it like this. God sends his rain on the just and the unjust and lets his sun shine on the good and the bad alike. We worship a loving God. God does not reward us in proportion to our effort. For the sake of love, God goes beyond what is fair and just. Of course, we aren't likely to complain when the scale tips in our favor. But it sure is hard to be happy for others when the scale tips in their favor. It is almost impossible for any of us to be genuinely happy for the good fortune of others, to wholeheartedly celebrate their happiness with them. Well, what can we do about this? We can start by working to recognize when we are being tempted to dwell on jealous thoughts and envious feelings. And we can pray, asking God to help us turn our backs on such thoughts and feelings. That's not all. We can also take a different point of view and look at our jobs and our responsibilities in new ways. Like what Martha, Mother Teresa said once upon a time. She said, you know, I tried to give poor people for love what the rich could get for money. She went on to say, no, I wouldn't touch a leper for a million dollars. Yet, I willingly cure him for the love of God. Most importantly, we can pray for God to make us grateful for the privilege of having a job, the privilege of having a family to support, the privilege of belonging to a church that needs and wants something from us. Because of our love for Christ, we count it all joy to further his cause, even to suffer for him. Service is its own reward. It brings joy. And it brings a kind of self-satisfaction that comes from knowing you just were able to do some good. It is a reward to know that you are doing God's will. It is a joy to know that as you serve others, you are at the same time serving Christ. And this is the point of today's parable. Those who worked all day had the reward of being useful all day long, in contrast to those who were able to work in the vineyard for only an hour or so. Are there challenges in putting in a full day's effort? Sure. Is it easy to slave away all day under the scorching heat of the sun? No. Is it fun? <laughs> not necessarily. But that does not mean that it is necessary for us to give God the evil eye because God wants to be generous to someone else. Yes, indeed. God's ways are not like ours. 
And thank goodness for that. God is more than just. God is more than fair. God is loving and generous. God is merciful and slow to anger. And we have Jesus to thank for opening our eyes to God's love and God's generosity. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. At this time, take a moment to pray about the offering that you will give to say thank you for God's goodness and to support the life and ministry of our Savior Lutheran Church in Nicomas, Florida. And for your convenience, online giving is possible from our website, oslnicomas.com. Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them, offered in great thanksgiving, and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. After each petition, I will conclude. Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and its ministry. Unite us in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who stretched the spangled heavens, we thank and praise you for the gift of the sun, moon, stars, mountains, valleys, grasslands, and deserts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of great mercy and love, you show faithfulness and kindness to the world every day. Guard those who suffer because of dishonest policies, corrupt government, or unfair labor practices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you provide for all our needs. We pray for those who are homeless, jobless, or hopeless. We pray for those who are forgotten, ignored, or isolated. We pray for all in any need, especially those we name at this time. Linda, Betsy, Irene, Jim, Teresa, Mike's family, Todd, John, Ron and Barb, Katie, and others we name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation and our neighborhood. Accompany us wherever we are on our journey of faith. Give us joy in the present and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of endings and beginnings, we remember before you all the faithfully departed. Comfort those who mourn. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. God, creator of all things, speaking reformation into being, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, raising the dead, Holy Spirit, living voice, calling and enlightening the church, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. That concludes our worship service for today. Pray that you'll have a great week ahead of you and that you will continue to live out your faith in your everyday life. Before we say goodbye, we will listen to the postlude. Thank you.